everybody. I'm very excited to land with all of you in the South Pole to meet science, to meet the voice of science uh, that uh, uh, will explain us uh, this uh, amazing international project that, uh, that they are uh, doing uh, with uh, different scientist organizations. So this is the session number five. We, uh, we have been so far uh, in uh, China, we have been uh, in Japan, we have been in India, and now we are in Antarctica. Uh, so uh, welcome to Food for Earth uh, uh, Day, the 24-hour marathon organized by Future Food Institute that I'm honored to represent uh, here, and by FAO, the United Nations Organization for Food and Agriculture that represents more than 190 countries. Uh, uh, my name is Claudia Laricchia. I'm the head of institutional relation of the Future Food Institute. Uh, it's named 9 a.m. GMT uh, and it's 5 p.m. in Antarctica. But we are connected with the Concordia station, thanks to the station leader, Alberto Salvati. And we are connected with our Salvati. scientist. Ciao, Alberto. Uh, and, oh, uh, ciao a tutti. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Concordia. Fantastic. And we are connected with the Giuditta Celli. Uh, Giuditta is a scientist and a former researcher in Antarctica. So, Giuditta, uh, I, I leave you the floor to start this conversation with uh, Antarctica. Yeah, thank you, Claudia. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I was uh, in Concordia Station last year. So, for me, it's like I go back home with my friends and colleagues. And uh, I'm going to share but, my screen. Welcome back, Giuditta. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going just to uh, share my screen to show people who are watching some pictures just to understand where we are going and what they are experiencing right now. So, yeah, share. Okay, so. Um, this is uh, Antarctica, the South Pole, and as you can see, there are a lot of different research stations from countries all over the world. And we are with Concordia, that is an Italian French, French station. Uh, in fact, uh, there are 12 people now. We work a team between uh, French, Italian, and uh, the HISA research doctor that uh, is uh, from uh, an European country. We have one from Denmark. And uh, the station is a far Holland. away, and this year is Holland, right? Sorry. <laughs> and uh, the station is uh, uh, 1,000 kilometers far away from the coast and is um, three kilometers of altitude. And uh, it's just in the middle of nowhere, as you can see. The station is uh, here, the two white towers. And uh, all around there is a summer camp, containers, uh, uh, has magazine. Uh, and just the power station uh, or some laboratories. And uh, there is nowhere, just high, nothing, just high sand snow, but it's quite incredible. And uh, when I was there in the summer, the average temperature was minus 55, and during the winter it was minus 70, and we reached minus 82, and with the wind it was minus 104. So it's quite cold and you need to go outside really well equipped. And um, it's a one year long expedition with the summer period uh, from November to February. Now they are in the winter period that is from uh, February to November. And uh, they are going to experience this in just a couple of weeks. Wow. Uh, that is the polar night they are going to experience a 24 uh, hours per day of night with incredible stars and if they are lucky they are going to see as uh, we did uh, the southern light we hope and, we hope yeah <laughs> and this is was my team we were 15 
And uh, it's not too easy to live all together in this situation because uh, you can have some fights, you, are not, you don't agree uh, about everything, but uh, you can find some special connection with the other people and create a really wonderful friendship. And uh, before to go there, we had to be trained. Uh, the Italian team has two weeks of training uh, with the Enea and PNRA, uh, and the French four with the Hyper. And the Italian team was on the Mont Blanc, as you can see here and here down here, half on the right. Uh, just to understand if we were able to manage stress, to manage uh, our situation, and uh, to be ready to be alone in the cold. And uh, upon the to left... Able to live together also. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most important thing. And here we were trained, for example, to extinguish fire because uh, we can be rescued during the winter, so we need to be able to manage uh, every situation. And here uh, on the right down, we were all together for a week of team building, French and Italian people, we were in Italy. And uh, we were just camping, trying to understand if we can live together and to find something common to share and to know each other. So this is just a, a small introduction. And now we are going back to Alberto. So guys, how are you? Tell us how it's going. And after you can just do a two of a presentation and tell us what we're doing there. And if someone you is working with climate change. Oh, thank you for your uh, very interesting introduction. And uh, also for to see the picture that are very care for us, like in the, in the Alpine mountains, <laughs> it's a very, very beautiful experience that uh, we we live together there. And um, we are going uh, well, maybe for some things also well that in uh, our countries, as you know. <laughs> and um, but uh, <laughs> we are really isolated, uh, as you say. For uh, one year we stay here, not nine months, uh, without. Uh, any possibility to to help from outside or to go away because it's too cold for flight and the three nights three months we we have uh, completely dark uh, no sun and uh, our neighbor more close are on the space <laughs> because there is the astronauts that uh, pass sometimes over our base uh, with the uh, uh, ISS the International uh, Space Station, and uh, otherwise we have to to walk on the highs for uh, at least 600 kilometers to reach the Vostok base, it is a Russian uh, base, and another one uh, that is uh, more far, more than 1,400 kilometers, is uh, the USA base. And, uh, these three bases are the only uh, open all the year uh, that uh, we have an, a team like us that stay isolated for a long time. You are isolated and, um, uh, and in, in this period uh, uh, we all are experimenting uh, kind of uh, being isolated uh, in our home even if uh, of course, you are isolated in a very extreme uh, uh, situation, uh, but but it's good that you open uh, uh, this uh, uh, this Snapchat uh, on uh, on the work you, you are doing uh, with uh, uh, schools, uh, with uh, uh, other uh, with the, the human humankind community, because I know that you have a lot of connections. Uh, uh, to explain the projects you are in charge of, right? Yes, that's right. And um, it's a bit strange uh, when we do now co connection with the schools and the, the Italian, uh, in particular, as a who's the program about this, because. Um, uh, it's strange because uh, we see the people not together, they stay isolated in, in their home. Uh, they are more serious than when uh, we <laughs> meet in, in their class. 
So also maybe more uh, they have more attention, but maybe less funny and less uh, interact the video conference. But it's yeah. really interesting to stay in contact, uh, not only with our, our parents and family, but uh, with uh, all the schools and the other person that work in Italy, in French and uh, in the uh, Netherlands. Yeah, I remember the, the when uh, we are here now. When Giuditta was uh, in the, at the Concordia station, we made some connection with the, the Malpighi Institute uh, in Bologna, in Italy, and also from our international boot camp with FAO from Tokyo. And it was, uh, and also from Iceland. Hi. So it was uh, very excited to connect uh, the North Pole with the South Pole uh, and uh, uh, to be all together uh, to actually understand uh, how to act on climate. Uh, it was fascinated to reflect about the memory of ice uh, because the ice uh, recollect uh, uh, a lot of data and information information that you are studying, uh, but it's not, uh, uh, not all the people are aware about the importance of the work that you are doing. Uh, so we would like to learn more uh, about uh, uh, the projects you are doing to monitor climate change trend. Oh, uh, yes, um, I think, uh about this uh, observation, the best was that uh, Ines or Camille uh, say something about uh, what we do here about the glaciology studies. But uh, uh, also, it could be interesting if uh, we have the time uh, to introduce uh, ourselves, uh, each one, if you agree, if you want. Of course. So yeah, you can yeah. uh, know uh, who, who we are, what we are doing, why we are here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, OK. I, mm, my name is Alberto Sarto. My name is Alberto Salvati. I'm an engineer from the National Research Council of Italy. And uh, I here like a station leader. And uh, also for to follow the physics uh, of atmosphere projects. And uh, on my left, we this tab. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Loredana Faraldi. I'm the doctor of the station the medical doctor that take care of the crew of the of the crew of the station and uh, i come from the um, uh, icu i'm an um, i am an uh, um, intensivist and uh, anesthesiologist and i work uh, in uh, niguarda hospital uh, hi everybody uh, my name is ines olivier and um, I'm just here for uh, the French part of the station. So I'm in charge of um, uh, glaciology measurements for a French lab uh, in Grenoble. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm uh, Camille Briand. I'm a paleoclimatologist. And here I'm the chemist and the glaciologist for the Italian part. And I work essentially for the aerosol for the, the Italy. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stein Tole. I'm a Dutch medical doctor and I'm doing this year's biomedical uh, research program at Concordia. And uh, we do that because it's mostly interesting because it's, uh, the European Space Ag Agency is quite interested in, in looking at Antarctica as an analog for future space habitats. Because the extreme conditions here have quite a lot in common with um, uh, 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 such a place in space, such as the isolation, the confinement and the monotony. So we do several uh, projects here, psychological projects and, and physico physiological projects, um, experiments that we do on the whole crew to find out a little bit about that. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Elisa Calmont. Uh, I'm from France, and I am the cook in charge of uh, feed the, this team every day, except this Sunday. <laughs> Fantastic. In this food for her today, <laughs> it's very important to listen to you too. Yes, yes, it's uh, one of the pleasure, not so many pleasure that uh, we have uh, here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, hi, everybody. I'm um, Bastien. Uh, I'm French and I am uh, the electrician of the station. Hi everybody, I'm Vivien, I'm the plumber and uh, technical supervisor of the base. 
Good morning, my name is uh, Sylvain and I'm part of the technical team and I am uh, in charge of uh, making electricity because we are not connected to any uh, power station. So I try to keep light on. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Juan Celas. I'm an electronician here on the base and I work um, mostly in geophysics, uh, in seismology, geomagnetism, and uh, physics of atmosphere, and also in astrophysics uh, for a French program and also for Italian's program. Ciao a tutti, sono Andrea Ceinini e qui in, uh, in Concordia faccio il meccanico autoveicoli. Okay, the mechanical. There is another important thing about Andrea that uh, is uh, this is seven uh, times that uh, Andrea participated in Antarctic expedition. This then is a really veteran uh, yeah. <laughs> about Antarctica. <laughs> So, Alberto, uh, recently Pope Francis said that we thought we had stayed healthy in a world that was sick. Hey, Claudia, sorry. Yeah, I cannot see the video, so I don't sorry, know Claudia. if... Uh... We have a... Okay. Ah, sorry, we have uh, also Luca. <laughs> Just a moment. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, sure. Maybe we have a... But if you... <laughs> Don't see him is is a fault because he is the ICT. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, I am uh, Luca Iagnello and uh, as Alberto just said, uh, I am the in charge of uh, the connection uh, with the rest of the world uh, about the uh, satellite connection and the internet. And uh, I hope that uh, you see us good. <laughs> and I work at the uh, National Research Council uh, as Alberto. And, uh, it. Nice to meet you and thank you for everything. <laughs> for yes, how can you can can see uh, you can see we are uh, a part of our researchers, a part of our technicians, a part for logistics, a part for the studies. And uh, all together we do the maintenance, we take live uh, this uh, base and our uh, all the years yes i was i was quoting uh, uh, what was uh, your question before sorry yes i was quoting uh, pope francis uh, that recently said that we thought we'd stayed healthy in a world that was sick uh, speaking about the current situation uh, uh. I would like to ask you, how sick is this world from your perspective? Now we try, we try, eh? you, you, Camille, Camille. Okay. Camille, Ines, come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so no, I will talk. <laughs> so, um, so yes, normally in France, I work on the global warming, so maybe I can answer. Um, so yeah, the world is sick, that's true. We know that for maybe 30 years now. Um, the problem is mostly the pollution of the humans. Um, so here, that's why we, we work about the, the aerosol, for example, the impurities, all the dust, all the chemical uh, elements that we can find on the, on the atmosphere. So we try to find, uh, for example, if we have a lot, uh, and which uh, chemical elements, for example, we can have, and if they come from the from the other continents. So uh, yes, the, the the earth is really sick, and uh, unfortunately, we we don't do a lot of things for now to to improve this to to heal her heal her. Um, but uh, but I think maybe with the it's too bad, but maybe with the with the problem that we have uh, in all the continents now, except in Antarctica, um, maybe we can like wake up and uh, and understand that the Earth is really um, fragile and that we have to save her. If we save her, we save us. So yeah, maybe now we can we can understand what is really fragile, like like humans. Uh, so yeah, I hope we can do some things now in the, in the next months and in the next years.
Okay. Some some other comments or thoughts? Uh, no, for me it's okay that if you have a question or subject that we you want to talk about, yeah, sure, you can go. I'm seeing Sarah, are you connected? No. No, okay. No. <laughs> yes, so yes. Ah, okay, I'm, here you are. I'm, I'm connected, but just to watch you and say hi to Judita. <laughs> hi to Judita and to Alberto and all the team. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> So Sarah is the founder of Future Food Institute uh, and she is the mastermind behind this 24 hour marathon. Yeah, so uh, just to let know who is watching us, uh, if someone of the guys can tell how they are uh, reducing the impact on the environment of the station. So how they treat the waste, for example, and uh, how they what they eat so about the food something about the team uh, yeah so in the base we recycle the water so now we recycle 85 percent of the water um, so we don't uh, throw away this uh, the important waste and uh, we economize uh, energy uh, because uh, the only way to make water here because we are not connected uh, to the grid it's uh, to smell to melt uh, snow <laughs> so uh, yeah it's uh, very important it's good uh, uh, the, uh, on uh, on september 29 for the first time we will have uh, uh, the food loss and waste uh, day because uh, there have been a UN resolution on that uh, to raise the consciousness uh, on this uh, very important issue uh, because of course food waste also has a very high impact on climate change and so far we waste uh, one third of the uh, production of food at a global level. So it's good to see that you are becoming a green station too. Judita, do you have any further question for them? We we just have seven minutes left. Yeah. Um, yeah, the fact is that I know things, so I don't know <laughs> something that can be curious for, uh, for other people. Uh, but uh, yeah, something that usually schools us to us was what we hit there. So if there is like a food waste and uh, how we have our food in the station. Okay, I was uh, going to speaking about this. So the Thank food you. is coming by the red. Uh, it's, it's kind of a big tractor who's bringing the food from uh, the station du Mont Durville or the station uh, Mario Zucchelli. They are provided from New Zealand, Australia, France, and Italy. And these food are coming uh, until here. And after we are, for the fresh food, uh, like usual at your home, we are putting the food in the plus four in your fridge. And, uh, but for the frozen food, we are putting this food uh, outside in container so so this is yes this is kind of uh, our natural fridge so the food is stuck uh, outside and when I need it I'm going outside uh, he here you can see uh, the red this is a big tractor who are bringing the fuel the fuel to to warm the station all the material to maintain the station in the good uh, way, and also uh, the food. This is the main part of the red. Uh, for me, after, uh, you have to know that to cook here, it's very, diff not very, but this is different from your home 
or in Italy or in France or anywhere at sea level because uh, here, for example, the water is boiling at 83 degrees and not 100, so it takes a lot of time to cook something, to cook, for example, pasta, rice, and, uh, and other stuff. The bread here, <laughs> this is very, very difficult to have a good bread and find the good recipe because uh, in the first try, uh, it's very flat. <laughs> yeah, I remember. It's a flat bread. <laughs> flat, flat and compact and uh, stuck in the stomach. <laughs> uh, yes, we don't try to waste uh, because everything who is bringing here, it costs a lot of uh, energy, of fuel, it costs a lot of money to bring here because uh, it takes the plane, it takes the boat, it takes the, the red. So we are trying to not throw at minimalist at least. To don't throw because uh, it's very expensive and, and we need to, to eat what we have and uh, how we can. So this is the, my biggest challenge, but uh, they are not too difficult and we are having good moments uh, at lunch and dinner. So it's uh, a gift for me. So it's mm. cool. And are you thinking about uh, integrating uh, uh, some uh, uh, innovative techniques uh, uh, to grow food uh, uh, in the Concordia station? Uh, yes, we want, but uh, now we cannot. Because, in fact, there is a, a treaty who, which is mandatory to not bring anything on this uh, land. For example, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, any trees, any any animals, or something alive, because if mm -hmm. we bring something on this uh, land, we are going to input something not natural on this land. So we don't have the right to make it grow something or bring something new. Yeah, I was thinking to indoor uh, farming, for instance, uh, with uh, I don't know hydroponic, uh, something like this. Uh, uh, would be interesting to understand if uh, in extreme situation, uh, you know, now food can be grown also in the space. Uh, so um, could be interesting to explore this uh, op option. Yeah, I think it's a really missed opportunity that we don't have it here at this moment. And mm -hmm. I know that at coastal stations at Neumeyer, uh, the German station, they do have uh, uh, something like what you describe. And there is this kind of projects going on, but not yet here. Maybe it's something for the future, but I think it requires some effort because you need to write a science protocol that uh, needs to be approved to make sure you can imp implement something like that in, in Concordia as well. Yeah, maybe a commitment for Future Food Institute uh, would be to <laughs> start uh, a project uh, like this in the future. Why not? Uh, no, Judita, what I do you think? think? think would yeah, I think uh, it's <laughs> really good. <laughs> You'll be very happy. <laughs> yeah, because during the winter, they are going to miss fresh food, like salad, tomatoes. I don't know if you already have finished it. We were uh, last year. This don't time remind of... us, Judita. <laughs> what? <laughs> don't remind us, Judita. <laughs> Sorry, I was just explain to the <laughs> people but uh, yeah you're going to dream about them sorry so exactly. they're going to uh, see happens in november just to say for example yeah so, we, sorry, we're aware of this uh, yeah sorry, we're curious guess. how it's gonna be in the next few months actually <laughs> what okay guys we we just have one minute uh, left uh, so I, I would use this time to thank you a lot for your work. Uh, thank you a lot for your commitment uh, for the planet Earth. Uh, and, uh, and thank you for being with us uh, in, in this 24-hour uh, uh, marathon. Uh, that is the largest uh, lesson we are doing on the regenerative power of food. We now end over to Russia. Uh, so I would say to all the people following us on YouTube, I know that there are a lot of people following us, uh, to not forget uh, to uh, interact with us on uh, social media using the 